Hi, I'm Abby Glass. I'm the founder and designer for Abby Glass, and I'm here with the Desire Company. This is a class to teach you how to take care of your clothes so that you can build a more sustainable wardrobe and feel better about your purchases. All you need for this class are hangers, a seam ripper, a spool of thread, a needle, and some clothes that need to be fixed. I'm about to teach you how to take proper care of your clothes, and we're gonna start with a classic blazer, which every woman should have in their closet, and I'm gonna teach you all the things you need to know to take care of it. First thing is when you get a piece of tailored clothing, always know that the pockets are basted and that you should unbaste your pockets. And sometimes your back vent is also basted, so it's stitched shut, and that should also be cut open as well. I am now going to show you how to sew on a button. Everyone always asks me where they can find someone to sew their button on, and you can do it yourself. What I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to surgically remove one of these beautiful buttons off of this blazer and sew it back on. So if you ever wanted to change your buttons, which some people do wanna do to maybe spice things up on an old blazer, or let's say you've got a broken button and you need to fix all of the buttons or replace all of the buttons, you can easily remove a button or remove any stitch on your garment with a seam ripper. And it looks like a little hook, it's a little razor, so be very careful. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go right underneath the button and you're gonna pick the stitch off. And it should pop off with almost one little pop. So now I've got this off. Our poor blazer is missing a button. And um, now I'm gonna show you how to stitch one back on. So you're gonna wanna make sure you remove any remaining thread from the blazer. And in this case, I'm actually going to pin it closed because I'm gonna use one of these yellow point pins because as you can see, this is flapping all over the place. You wanna make sure it goes right in the exact place it was before. I'm going to pin it shut to make sure it stays in the same position. Okay, so you always want to use the right color thread that matches the fabric of your jacket or pants or whatever you're fixing so that it blends in. I am going to use a contrasting color so that you can see it better. There's a million kinds of thread out there. Um, everyone's always asking what the right thread is. And basically, you wanna get something that just looks similar to the thread that's already sewing on all of the other buttons. Thread comes in a shiny or a not shiny version. I'm using a not shiny or matte version, and I'm using a dual duty cotton thread. So this is gonna be strong, and it's not gonna be shiny or stand out. So I'm gonna take about two arms lengths of thread here. And um, if you're just starting out, it's kind of like for beginners, I would just get the neutral colors, um, black, white, and probably like a off-white. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna thread your needle and you're going to bring one end of the thread all the way down to the end of the other thread so it's two ply. And you're gonna wanna tie a really easy, just like loop knot at the end. And when I'm working with a heavyweight fabric that is for a jacket or a coat, I'm gonna wanna do two knots. Okay, so now that I've tied the knot at the end, you've got, you're gonna have like a little tail, so you're gonna make sure you cut the tail off because you don't want that hanging off your button. For this jacket, this is called a shank button. It, it has the little loop on the back. It's a little tougher than sewing on like a two hole or a four hole button like you would have on a button down. Watch closely. All right, so I'm gonna place the button um, on top of the place where it came off and I've got my pin securing that. And I'm actually, instead of going in the underneath, I'm going to go in on the top layer and I'm basically gonna just secure my thread. So make sure when you pull it tight, it's not coming out. And then you're gonna loop up through the shank button and then you're gonna loop back in right where you originally went in and then back out again. So you're just making a series of loops. And again, this is 
pretty much the way you would sew on a button for any garment that fell off. It's super easy. All right, so now that it's tight and it's attached to the blazer again, I'm going to go back through the hole and I'm gonna make another loop. So I'm on my right side now, I'm going under and I'm going to go under, back up again. And you wanna make sure every time you go through, you're pulling it tight because otherwise your button is going to get loose and it may get pulled off again. Okay, so it's tight. I always check to make sure it feels good, secure. I'm gonna go through one more time. I usually use the rule of three, so I, I do three loops. And I'm gonna go back down. And on this third loop, so because I'm actually securing something to the under, since this is technically a faux button, I'm securing this to the underside. I'm gonna go all the way through on my third one. And then I'm gonna go all the way back through to the top. Okay, so those are all of your loops. All right, so now that I have done that, I'm going to do three wraps. I'm gonna actually wrap the, the thread around the shank. One, two, three. And then I'm going to tie my knot to secure the button on. So this is the last step. And um, I'm going to go through one of the loops, back through the thread, and I'm gonna tie a knot. So I'm gonna, by tying a knot, I'm going in and out, in and out of a loop. And then I'm gonna really carefully finish it off. All right. That's it, we're done. All right, so now I'm going to, again, make sure this is secure, and then I'm gonna cut as close as I can to the knot without cutting the knot. And you can tie a double knot if you want to, but since this is not a place where you're really moving your buttons a lot, um, I just tied one knot, and now we see the button is back on. So that is something that probably happens with all of your garments. I'm gonna show you how to seam rip the um, welt pocket. Even trousers have a back pocket that isn't functional, but it still has a pocket bag inside of it. So what you can do is see, is there a real pocket or is there a fake pocket? And if it's real, it means that you're supposed to open it. So you're gonna take your little seam ripper and you are going to find the edge and you're just going to pick the edge if you can find the thread, you kind of pull it apart so you can see the threads. You're gonna pick the thread open, and then you're just gonna pull very gently, and the thread's just gonna pop right out. So you really go like one stitch at a time. This is actually basted pretty tight, but when you pull it gently, it should open a few stitches at a time. So, this is something you have to do at home because they're not gonna open these stitches at the store. It means that it's a new garment. So once you've opened it, you have a real pocket, which you didn't have before. Um, the other one is still basted. As you can see, I can't get my hand in there. So another way to care for your clothes is fixing your hems. So sometimes my heel will get caught in the hem of one of my trousers, or I have my jacket on the back of a chair and you know something rips when I pull it back out. So you will, will see these blind hems everywhere if you start looking for them. And it almost looks like a hand stitch. And it's it almost looks like a we, it's called a whip stitch or an invisible stitch, and um, it's little diagonal stitches. And this one here is done by a machine, but you can emulate the same stitch by hand stitching, and you don't have to take it to your tailor or dry cleaner to get it fixed. You can do it yourself. So I am going to show you how to fix that. 
The most common blind stitch to come undone is usually on a pair of trousers. Um, if your trousers are grazing the ground as you're walking or your heel gets stuck in it and rips it, it's happened to all, you know, almost all of the skirts I've worn in the summers if I'm sitting outside. Um, it's something that you can definitely fix yourself. I'm gonna show you the inside of these trousers. And there is a surged hem on this, which is an overlock machine. That's something you can't do at home, but it basically keeps it from fraying. And then the stitch that's on top of that is the blind hem, which if you pull the hem apart, you can see it's what attaches the raw edge when it's folded up to the part that you see of the garment on the outside. And it looks invisible. You can't even see the stitch. It's like magic the way that it's sewn on. So I'm gonna teach you how to make an invisible stitch so you can't see it from the outside. Okay, so I am going to again seam rip this. And this is something that you can also do if you want to, let's say you want to wear a taller shoe or a shorter shoe with a pair of pants that are already hemmed. Um, you can seam rip the hem out and then re-hem it a little bit shorter by using this technique. Okay, so I've opened up a, a small part of this hem in the pant. And what I'm gonna do is sew it back up. Again, I'm going to use a contrasting thread just so you can see it. Um, but normally I would buy an army green thread that you wouldn't see even if you did go a little too heavy on the outside on your stitch. Okay, so I just made two knots at the end of my thread. I'm gonna snip it really small. And then I'm actually going to go in from the inside, the inside of the hem, so like inside the sandwich of your hem, so that you don't ever see the knot. And I'm gonna, I usually like to start at the side seam or the inseam because it's super thick and you have a less chance of that knot popping out. So, I'm going in at the, I think this is the side seam. Okay, so you're gonna go about a quarter of an inch in from the um, surged edge, which I told you about, which is what keeps it from fraying. Um, and the reason you wanna go in a quarter of an inch is that all fabric is woven, well this fabric especially is woven like this, and if you don't go far enough in, your stitch could just rip the fabric or the weave out and your whole hem is gone. So you wanna make sure that you, where you go in is far enough that you couldn't unweave the fabric. Okay, so I am going to, I'm right now I'm on the, let's call it the thick part of the hem, which is two layers and I'm going to be going from the thick part to the thin part. I'm pretty much attaching the folded part to the unfolded part so that it stays hemmed. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm, depending on what you are hemming, you usually wanna keep your stitches pretty tight, especially if they're prone to be ripped apart. The t tighter you go, the stronger your hem is. So I'm gonna do mine about a quarter inch apart. So I'm already in here, I'm gonna go, so let's call it in, I'm on the thick part, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna pick probably like three fibers of, fa of this weave. So like the smallest amount you possibly pick out. And you're just gonna scoop those little threads and then you're gonna go back in to your folded up hem a quarter of an inch further from where you started. So it is, a, it is a little tedious, but this will ensure that it doesn't rip again. 
So again, I'm gonna do the same motion. I'm gonna pick in. I'm gonna get like two or three fibers, the smallest amount I could possibly get. And then I'm gonna go back into the thick part a quarter of an inch in. So what you're gonna see on the outside, see even I'm using a contrasting thread and you still can't see where I picked because I literally am taking like the tiniest fibers. If you work with, let's say, a pair of silk pants or a silk top, because something is shiny, it's gonna show your stitch a little more, so you wanna be very delicate. You don't wanna pull it tight. Um, but if you're working with something that's matte or thick, you can pull it a little tighter because you won't be able to see it. It's not shiny. Okay, so I'm gonna do that same motion, and I, I kinda like it when the stitches are all angled in the same way. So I'm gonna pick and go through, pick, go through. And every time you do it, you wanna make sure you're pulling it tight. Pick. And I have a two ply thread because this is a thick fabric, you can also do a one ply. And I also always check this side to make sure my stitches aren't showing because this is supposed to be an invisible blind hem. So I'm gonna pick, go through. All right, I'm almost to the end. So usually when um, you buy a garment and it's machine finished, it ties a lot of knots, like almost every stitch it ties a knot. So the good thing is, if you stitch up until the machine stitch, you're usually not going to see the machine, machine stitch um, unravel anymore. You, but you wanna go probably like an inch over um, from where the unraveling started in the first place, just to be safe. So I'm gonna go over what's already still stitched together. So I'm gonna go two stitches in. So I guess that's about a half an inch. All right, so a lot of times you're gonna get a weird knot because you're looping this thread and twisting it and it wants to twist on itself. Um, this happens all the time. Sometimes I can fix it, sometimes I can't. Usually if you pull the loop with your needle, oh, it worked, you can, uh, get rid of that knot, because that's a really annoying thing that happens a lot. You have to have a lot of patience. Okay, so, uh-oh, when I was fixing that, I pulled this too tight. So what I'm gonna do is loosen this up a little bit. Loosen my stitch. There we go. Okay, so now that I'm done, I'm gonna make a knot to tie it off. Um, so I'm gonna do that same pick stitch motion. I'm gonna go a little less, a little closer in to my stitch to make it small. And then I'm gonna pull it tight and then I'm gonna go back inside that stitch to make a loop. Go back inside my, the loop I just made and that's my knot. So you're tying a knot just like you would tie a knot in a rope, it's just really small. Okay, so now that's knotted off. I can't see it from this side, it's nice and clean. So I'm going to cut this as close as possible. And my hem is fixed, which is great. So as your lifestyle changes and you've invested in nice clothes that you love, you may want to wear them differently. You may feel like they don't fit you the same anymore. Um, maybe you don't want to wear heels anymore, so a pant's too long. Lifestyles change and your clothes can change with you. So um, there's a few really easy ways to care for your clothes in terms of alterations. One I get all the time um, from customers who are petite is People don't know they can shorten a blouson sleeve or a blouse sleeve, which is so easy and pretty inexpensive. Um, so this is a classic blouse sleeve um, that has a cuff at the end. I'm sure you have a million of these in your closet. And it looks pretty complicated to shorten this because there's so much going on. Um, but in reality, 
you, um, it's an easy fix and you can pretty much take this to any alterations. They can take this cuff up and move it up a few inches to shorten it. So um, that's an easy, quick fix. Um, you can also shorten a blouse. So let's say this blouse was designed to be tucked in. It's a little more traditional and maybe you're not going to the office anymore um, and you wanna shorten this, you can wear it out with a pair of jeans um, and just be a little more casual. This is just a rolled hem to have this hemmed to the appropriate length um, to wear with a pair of jeans. You can also, right now, this is a shirt tail sleeve or it goes um, in a curve at the bottom. A lot of more casual shirts have a straight cut at the bottom, so you could also just have this hemmed straight so you could wear it more casually again. Another easy alteration is, let's say you lose a little weight or um, you want something to fit you in a little more tailored way. Most blazers um, come with tailoring, uh, tailoring lines, style lines down the back. Um, and most coats, uh, let's say you bought an oversized coat in the 80s and um, you want it to fit in a little more modern way, it's very easy to open these seams and take it in in the back um, instead of buying a new coat or saying, I'm not gonna wear this, it's out of style. Another thing uh, with a pair of pants is super easy. Let's say you bought a pair of palazzo pants or a wide leg pant um, that you were wearing with heels all the time. You can crop them, uh, hem them shorter to make a, you know, more of a culotte, or you can taper them to be a little bit of a straighter pant, um, which would allow you to really wear them in shorter um, proportionally. Yeah, lots of easy, quick fixes to reinvent your clothes. So the last way that you take care of your clothes is storing them properly. That means getting the right hangers. That means making sure that you actually put them on the hangers and um, organizing them in a way where you actually wear them. They don't get lost. I love using a velvet hanger. Those are, sorry, those are very clingy to the fabric. Um, a lot of other hangers, things just fall off. They end up at the bottom of your closet. You can't find them. And these really stick to the inside of your clothes. Um, the other hangers that I really love are um, special pant hangers. So um, these allow you to fold your pants in half so that they don't get wrinkled and hang. And they're very slim line. And you basically just fold, I folded my pants in half here like this. And usually I'll take this, this is the, the, the crotch seam, and I'll just fold it so that you're not getting any weird wrinkles. The other way you can store pants is also, I don't know if you've ever noticed these loops that come in your pants, and sometimes they come in tops. This is also an easy way if you put them on a top hanger to ensure that they do not fall. These are, Slimline velvet hangers, they don't take up a lot of space. And I actually like the ones that have the bottom bar because you also can put pants on here. So let's say you have a two piece outfit, a uh, matching top and bottom. You can put the pants on here um, and then you can put the top over it so they stay together. And I actually really like this for kind of silky um, fabrics also because again, you just throw them on and it sticks to it. The other thing to really keep in mind when you're taking care of your clothes is to pay attention to the cleaning instructions. Something might shrink, something might get a hole in it if you're um, washing it improperly. So you need to make sure you follow those directions. Another key item that I always keep in my wardrobe is a lint roller. Even if I'm not wearing my clothes and I see there's lots of dust, just think your fabrics in your clothes are woven and there's space in the weave for things to get in there. And anything that can get in there can damage or shorten the, the length of time that that item is in its prime condition. So especially with something like a velvet or something where dust really sticks to it, I always make sure that I lint roll um, any like pet hair, any wool from rugs, that's a major thing that I always see on my clothes. And that can like really damage the um, integrity of your fabrics. So keep one of these handy. These are a few easy ways to care for your clothes. 
And um, it's really important to take care of your clothes because building a sustainable wardrobe is good for the planet, it's good for your pocketbook, and it also allows you to buy things that are maybe a little more expensive because if you take care of them and you have a higher cost per wear, you feel a little better about splurging. So um, really taking care of your clothes and not looking that, at them as expendable you know, parts of your life can really kind of change your outlook on how you shop. If you want to see more classes like this, don't forget to subscribe to The Desire Company.